And look at this. Look at my shirt here. I got this in Mexico. It seemed fitting since we're doing cards. And, you know, Mexico, uh, the door between the living and dead. There's not even a door. There's not even a doorway. Everyone just is there together. They honor their dead um, and treat them as though they are around them all the time, which they are. What I like about this shirt is it glows in the dark. So <laughs> that's really fun. Okay, I'm going to angle this down. Right. Hi, everyone. We're here with little Mitzi the Maniac. And let's see. Yeah, that's good. I'm angling it this today so that um, we're here in my glorious bedroom. I angled it so you can see my table um, because today we're going to talk about spirit card reading. Um, I'm going to teach you all how to do this. So if you have any kind of decks, you know, not gin rummy playing decks, but like reading decks, I don't care if it's tarot or spirit or shamanic or whatever, if you all come to run and grab them. And if you don't, don't worry. It's not necessary for this class. Um, I'm going to teach you a little bit about card reading and how we use card reading <laughs> for uh, direct receiving of messages. Um, there's several ways. Oh, trying to get comfy here. Okay. Uh, there's several ways that that can happen. And I want to share with you the lovely variety of techniques. Um, and I love card reading. Um, I have been doing card reading, gosh, um, my grandmother didn't really do card reading, although she had friends who did. She knew how, but she did a Ouija board and, you know, crystal ball. Look, this is my little crystal ball. Um, and she did other things. She didn't really do card reading. She had neighbors who did. So I've been like connected with card reading like my whole life. Um, and I like it. I like it a lot. Um, so I wanted to show you though, before we go in those, this is a beautiful little crystal ball that has some actual crystals in it. It's a, like a globe, like a snow globe with glitter. This kind of crystal ball, um, I forget her name. She sells them at the Pathways and the, some of the different, you know, like Love Light Festival and Pathways and Illuminate. And she has a variety of crystal balls. Some of them are also are like a music box kind of crystal ball. They play music. Um, but I like this because there is always action in there. So it just makes it really easy for my eyes to space out. When I look at this, I'm like, oh, okay, here it all comes. <laughs> Remember I was saying sometimes if you get your logical mind um, busy with something, then it opens up your creative mind to receive messages. And, um, and that's why, uh, oh, here I have some messages. Uh, Hi, hi, okay, hi everyone. So I don't have my glasses on. I can't really read your messages now. It's going to be fun. Uh, hi everyone, hi Kelly. Uh, um, it'll be fun when I'm drawing cards for you guys. <laughs> but what I love about this crystal ball is, so it gets my logical mind busy because it's kind of looking at the swirling of you see the swirling of the crystals and the glitter and looking at the shapes of the crystals in there. Isn't that beautiful? Doesn't that look magical? Oh my God, I love this little thing. And it's so small, I can wrap it up in a kerchief and stick it in my bag, you know, as long as I'm careful not to throw a brick in on top of it. And isn't that great? And while my logical mind is busy with holding it, so I don't drop it, turning it, shaking it, looking at it. My creative mind opens up and things start coming in. So this sweet little crystal ball 
it's comparable to card reading. Because what does the card do? You're using your hands, you're using your logical mind, you're shuffling, you're deliberately bringing in the energy into the cards while removing your connection of managing them. Like you're not managing the cards, you are energizing the cards, talking with them, and the answers come forward. It's using up your logical mind so that um, two things happen when you are uh doing card reading one is you are opening yourself up to getting a direct message from the actual cards because you're energetically you're like what is the best message for me today the card with the best message will come to you doesn't matter if you've ever used these cards before or not but the other thing is your creative mind is open and you're getting downloads of information so this is why card reading is awesome. This is one of my favorite decks. You're going to hear me say that about every deck I pull out today. The Re Reconnecting Soul 142 DNA Activation Cards. Okay. This is a wonderful deck. Now, this one um, has specific ways that you can work with it. As you see, they got a lot. Each deck has a symbol on one side and a meaning for the symbol on the other side. This one is embodiment. You are the embodiment of unique aspect of source. You are one with the I am. This activation enables you to be the power that is your divine birthright. And then you take the card while thinking about the message and it doesn't matter which way up. This See, you can turn it any which way and just kind of hold it and turn it or put it down and look at this because this is the energy of the message on the back. So these are wonderful cards. I love them. Sometimes I'll do a multi-card reading or sometimes I'll do a one-off, a single card reading. And um, so I'm going to go right now and say, what? What energy will be useful for our class today? I'm asking that. And when I do this, you guys remember, those of you who were in my previous classes, before I do card reading, I always ground and I open up my crown and I open myself to the divine energy flow. I was meditating before class, so I already did all of that. Um, is I wanted to get right into card reading and we've already done the energy flow meditation plenty of times. So I am flowing with divine energy, which means my ego is leaving. It doesn't matter to me what card I draw because the perfect card will be drawn for me. I'm not drawing the card. The card is coming to me. Remember that. What kind of cards are these? The name? It's the um, Reconnecting Soul created by Jean Adrienne. And it's a really wonderful, wonderful deck. There you go. Um, so a message that is good for all of us for our purpose of growth and understanding tonight. And then, so I shuffle. Now, keep in mind, it's not like I'm going to be dealing out hands here. I'm not shuffling to shuffle the deck. I'm shuffling it to get energy. The whole time I'm shuffling, I'm thinking of the question. And I'm open. I'm grounded. I'm open. I'm receiving. I've already created safe space. So whatever message I get will be pure and perfect. And I'm opening up so that the energy from the dimensions, from the divine, from collectives, from whomever feels like of the frequency of love connecting with us. And, and this one jumps out. So there's two things that can happen. Sometimes a card will pop out. And other times, like, okay, so we know you're here. We got this card. But let's do one more. And for this one, let's have a balance. Let's have another one. 
And what I'll do is my eyes are closed and I just feel the cards until one of them says, I'm the one. And I thank you guys. So the first part I drew, strength, your power. And this isn't me, this is you guys, okay? Your power and strength is limitless. There is nothing too large or too small for you to accomplish. The fuel that, you, the fuel that serves you is your faith. Your power and strength is limitless. There is nothing too large or too small for you to accomplish. The fuel that serves you is your faith. You see, and this can really go any direction. So normally I would take this and I would put this on my table. I would just let myself space out like I'm doing the crystal ball scrying. And I just let myself face and let the energy of it rise to me. I'm not looking to it. The energy of it is rising to me while I'm letting the, the beauty of that message wash over me. Now, I'm not thinking about it, I'm not but I'm just like, what does that feel to me? If there's an essence to this message beyond the words. So I get into kind of a Vipassana state of being one with the message while looking at the card. And I'm not gonna do it now, but if I were to do that for like five, 10 minutes, an epiphany would come forward. Now, in this situation, I know I'm rushing through this information. In this situation, when I am looking at the card, space down and inviting the card to come up and be one with my senses. So I'm not, while I'm looking at the card, I'm not like looking at it. Remember what I've said before, if you're looking for a spirit vision, the only spirit vision you will see is the one you're looking for. If you want spirit sight, you must just open yourself up and invite whatever is to come forward and present itself to you in whatever way, shape, form, or sense it does. So when I'm looking at the card, I'm spaced out. I'm aware of the card, but I'm inviting it to do what it wants to do. Sometimes a three-dimensional image will come up. Sometimes I get that kind of magic eye thing going on or it moves around a little bit. Sometimes, you know, other senses will take over. This card is imprinted with the energy of strength and faith and power, limitless strength and power with faith. So I just let that energy of that limitless strength, power, and faith, let the words release and let the imprint of it take over. And then the message comes in, message comes in. So I drew this card for you all. I also drew a second card. And the two of these will team together. The second card is truth. This is your I am presence and the definition of your divinity. With this activation, you are safe and protected because of who you are. When you put these two together, that is so powerful. Your power and strength is limitless because your fuel is faith. And truth is your personal definition. You are protected when you are in the resonance of truth. That is your divinity. When you think about this, it doesn't even matter if you believe in God or not or whatever. This isn't even about what is your belief system because every belief system resides in your core of truth. 
these two cards together are inviting you to find your strength in your truth and have faith in yourself and your truth. That is where you claim your divinity. So again, I would put these two down. I might even play with them a little bit. And that's getting my left brain kind of, but in a kind of spaced out way. You know, I'm not building a Lego palace here. And just like at a certain point, I feel invited to explore the resonance of this message. So this is what you would call a literal single card reading. Okay, so I'm working with one card, but again, sometimes one card, two will pop out because they want to be together. Or sometimes one card, you're like, well, I know I'm doing one card, but it feels like I need two cards or three. It's still a one card reading, but it may have two or three cards, uh, just like when you're doing charades, it may be one word, but you'll have three syllables. You know, it's, it's the same concept. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, and that message was for you all. It's important to remember you are each and every one of you and me and all of us. We are eternal divine beings. When we're not in life, we are, you know, energy that live in the frequency of love. We are here for a period of time having an adventurous experience. When we're done with this, we go back to being eternal divine beings. There's literally no difference between us that we think of ourselves, oh, we're plebeian humans or whatever. There's no difference between us and the great collectives and the galactic light beings and the ascended masters. We're all the same. We are all pure energy. The only difference is the amount of experience we've got. But that's the difference between a student and a master of a trade. You know, they're still the same. They're on different points in their paths, but they're the same. We are all the same. We are powerful. When we resonate in truth, you don't have to worry about ego or emotional abuse or criticism or um, false humility or being such an empath, you're absorbing everyone else's feelings. When you are in truth, you are your core of strength and integrity. So, okay, so that was serious. Let's do another single card reading. And um, so I wanna show you guys, if you're doing a, a reading, I don't know how many of you have experience with card reading. By the end of tonight, you'll feel like great masters. <laughs> but when you do a card reading, um, most of these decks come with a book. And like here, oh, here's a beautiful one. This one by Claudia Olivos. And this is the Sacred Mothers and Goddesses. Uh, Claudia is a, um, I think, Arlington area artist, and she, she does the most beautiful sacred artwork, um, and she does summer camps for children. This year they're doing it online. Um, totally recommend. So you see she has a card deck here, and she has the book. And the book, when you look in, it has the picture of the card and then the meaning. And some of these will have like different messages. It will have maybe the history of this particular uh, symbol on the card. Um, then it will have like a little story or a parable or something. And then it will say if the card is face up or if it's upside down, uh, what it means or whatever. Um, so when you're doing the cards, 
for this, I'm just pulling a card for me right now. Um, here we go. I got Kuan Yin, forgiveness. Isn't this be I'm telling you, Claudia is an amazing artist, just amazing. Check out her website, you know, Google her, Claudia Olivos, C L A U D I A O L I V O S. You can buy her things on Etsy and online, just beautiful. So I got here Quan Yin, forgiveness. Like I said, this card is for me, and that makes sense. So I'm going to look in here. Sometimes the cards will have a number on them, so you go to the number. Other times they might be in alphabetical order. So, Quan Yin, forgiveness. So there's a couple of pages. Of, there's like two and a half pages of material. And it has here uh, the story of Quan Yin and then the message. And then uh, for you to call upon Kuan Yin to get a di direct rapport, a connection with her, uh, actions that you can take to put good use to the message of the card. And if you wish to make an altar for her to connect the energy as you're going forward with this. And here the, and it's, um, there are issues of forgiveness that are surfacing in your life. You, and I don't need to go further because this is so true. And the person I need to forgive right now is myself. Um, last night I was with my meditation group and um, I became very emotionally responsive to uh, some things that other people were saying. These are people I greatly respect and appreciate and admire. Uh, we had a different take on things. And my fear was that they would come to harm if they believed what they believed. So I worried about them. And also, like, I didn't know how to reconcile my truth with their truth. I was very clear that all truths are valid, but I was very worried and like very emotionally responsive. And so I knew because of what my response, you know, we're in a Zoom thing and I had steam coming out of my ears and my face was turning red as I was kept my button muted so I wouldn't be like blurting out but everyone could see, and then, you know, I'm a blabbermouth, so I did blurt, but hopefully respectfully, um, and with love. But I know when I have an automatic big response out of my control, that means I'm in the midst of a karmic lesson. It might be a lesson I thought I had resolved, like maybe eight or ten times over already, but there is obviously some level of energy there that I promised my group I would spend the, some time meditating upon to see where, where is this disconnect. And so, um, because I cannot be um, a messenger of divine wisdom if I'm running around having tantrums. You know, so when I have an emotional response, it's imperative for me, for my balance, that I sit and see what do I need to work on in myself and what do I need to open up to out there that I can be um, more benevolent and kind and loving in all ways. And the card, this card is uh, Quan Yin, Forgiveness, and the deck is Claudia. Olivos, sacred mothers and goddesses. And again, if you go to Claudia's um, Etsy store or her website, you will just, oh my God. <laughs> so um, last night, instead of going to sleep at night, I was up all night. Um, I mean, my body was asleep, but I went up to the Akashic Library and I spent 
the whole night with the librarians, uh, getting lessons from them. I woke up this morning, I was exhausted, and I had a killer migraine, because this kind of thing, it's hard on me. So in this situation, the moment I drew the card, it's for me, I knew exactly what it was about. I didn't need to go and read about the card. I could have if I wanted to. I, um, If I'm reading for someone else, there are times when I'll draw the card and I'll open up and the message, the card triggers the message to channel through me. So then I might go back and say, let's go ahead and read the book and see if there's anything else in there that's relevant. We'll go to read the book and we're like, aha, we have certain aha moments as to what's in there. So I encourage you, especially when you're doing a single card drawing, to um, see what message flows through or comes to you, and then before you look at the book. Um, just stuffing my Archangel Gabriel Oracle cards by Doreen Virtue. They allow yourself to receive jumped out. You see, that is perfect. That's perfect. So I'm also going to show you guys, um, I have so many decks. I have like, I don't know, at least a hundred different decks for different purposes. But, and you know, I'm a bit of a deck hoarder, I guess, I don't know. But there are different decks you'll use for different things. Like if I want to open up, and talk with truly divine beings about planetary healing, I'm not going to use my uh, Esther and Jerry Hicks money and the law of attraction. You know, I'm not going to use that if I'm going to go talk with the angels about bringing love to the planet. But if I'm like, okay, I've been working on my business and I really need a little guidance and direction on how to get it to its next level, this one is it. Or also if I'd say, wow, you know, I haven't been to hang out with my friends much lately. Well, obviously none of us have, but I'm feeling a little lonely and whatever. I really want to like reconnect with my friends. This one, like this is great for 3D stuff for sure. Or if I want to get my angels, my guardian angel connecting with me to help me with bringing in more it's not just about money, it's prosperity on all levels. I might get my angel deck. Um, where's a good angel deck? Oh, here's one of my favorite angel decks. Whoops, I'm tearing it apart. This one by uh, Chrissy Astell, the angel deck. So I might get one angel deck and one money law of attraction. And I'll draw one card from here and one card from here and then when I put them together I'm like this is how I get my angels to help me get whatever 3d thing I need to the next level so um, you know the different cards have different frequencies the reconnecting the soul card deck I'm not going to use this one for um, you know where should I go on vacation or whatever I'm going to use this for soul work for my DNA repair with divine connection work, okay? Um, when I do the animal spirits, here, there. This is a beautiful, beautiful deck. I love working with the animal decks. So when I work with the animal decks, the animal decks are generally an earth connection. Um, you know, dealing with shamanics, with animal spirit guides, with nature, with crystal work, uh, with healing mandalas and grids and energy networks on our planet, uh, things like that, or connecting with my soul's work. Um, suppose I feel like maybe some of my soul shards, the, the pieces of the soul within me, maybe one of them is like, needs a little help coming to a healthy fruition, like I want to repair my heart or my throat. Animal spirit guides, 
are so good with this. So um, I might then call a one card and So let's see, like anyone out there, I'm always in repair on myself. So who wants to come forward? Oh my God, this is crazy. So I got the seahorse. Here's the crazy thing. Before class, I shuffled through this animal spirit deck to see like who had a message with me for me to help me with this class i got the seahorse so that's the second time in two shufflings of this deck that i got the seahorse back to back symbolism strength guidance transformation and feminine energy the seahorse is a symbol of power it has frequently appeared in the coats of arms of european nobles is associated with valor and bravery. It was the steed of the Greek god Neptune, or Poseidon, the ruler of the sea. Uh, and then it goes on and on. Uh, ability to uh, the spirit of physical and spiritual transformation. It signifies its role as a guide in times of change. So um, this is my card for tonight. This seahorse is helping me with the class tonight. And when I think about this, you know, I'm like, <sighs> teaching in a live stream like this, can it, it's an awkward feeling for me because I don't know how much anyone's getting out of what I'm saying. I'm just talking. I have no idea if you guys are like, oh my God, will she shut up and get to the point? Or if you're like, wow, that's really interesting. I wish she'd talk more about that, but she keeps moving on. Like, I have no idea. I don't even know how many people are watching, right? Or how many people are running the refrigerator to get something to drink, or I have no idea. So I have to open up and flow and before class tonight i said well someone please give me a little support with this and the seahorse came up strength guidance and transformation so i am very grateful i love it but you see animal totems are awesome and then we're going to do one other sweet little deck i love this deck this is by mary phelan also a local legend um mary's magical message cards and look at this it is the cutest little box and um it's got a lot of tiny cards in here um okay these are the so one time i when i bought this deck I was shuffling it and drawing the card and I drew the same card like back to back. Every single time only one card was coming up. I forget right now which was the card, uh, but it was one card that came up and it was like five or six times, like every time. And I kept like trying again, trying again. I was like, is this deck stacked with this one card? So I texted Mary a picture of the card and I, you know, was, because Mary and I work together, she's amazing. I was like, Mary, what's the deal? This card keeps coming up. And she texted back, that's so funny because uh, I have, she has like, I forget how many cards, that's a lot of cards. She said, there's only one of that one in the deck. Um, so I was getting a powerful little message there. Um, so one way people do is just <coughs> shuffling until, well, maybe her deck is too small. You keep shuffling till one flies out in the air. But I'm just going to, the eagle is guiding you and right now, the eagle is guiding you right now and offering you great insight, knowledge, and watch for signs. The eagle is guiding you right now. 
and to offer you great insight and knowledge. Watch for signs. Guys, this is a card that I got like six times. Um, what was it, last October? And I haven't used this deck since then. Um, and I just use it again, the same freaking card. Like, I could go into my texts and pull it up for you and show you guys, except I have a different phone. It's in my computer. But how wild is that? So the eagle is guiding me right now. We got the eagle and the seahorse. That's awesome. But when you get a card like that back to back to back, you got to pay attention for sure. So I love this deck, although maybe I should start chatting with the eagle a little more <laughs> because I'd like to get a different card from the deck. But Mary is great about personal guidance. Uh, I bought this at Rising Phoenix uh, Holistic Center in Manassas. Um, Mary has a few items there. They're fantastic. Um, she also has a website, and she's on Facebook, Mary Phelan, P-H-E-L-A-N. Mary is amazing. She does psychic TV and telepathic TV. Um, she's really... Whew, she is something else and really nice too, of course. So let's see. Um, that's so great. Yeah. So that's how you do a one card. And that's pretty basic. Um, you get the card and then you're like, what does this mean? You either get the meaning by flowing in through here or by research reading the little book that came with the card or looking it up you know or um you know there there's different ways but the cards i'm telling you they don't lie they always tell the truth so let me put some of these aside because i'm now going to teach you how to do a three card reading and this is I love three card readings okay um, I just want to show you this deck the Renaissance Tarot was designed by my cousin Brian um, he uh, he has passed he's not with us in physical anymore but he designed beautiful, beautiful tarot cards. So uh, when I was growing up, Brian, you know, taught all of us how to do tarot, the, uh, the classic way. And the one thing it showed me is tarot is really, really hard, like complicated. It's so detailed. Like you think astrological charts are complicated? People who are really good at tarot, it is a whole science right up there with the astrological charts. So um, it's my hope over the next few weeks while we're looking at cards um, to get a few other like awesome card readers. Um, I can teach you how to do shaman cards, but if I can get a shaman friend to teach how to do them, that would be awesome. And um, and I'll get someone really good at tarot. Maybe Mary. Mary is amazing at tarot. Uh, Mary Phelan. But what I do, it's more of an intuitive card reading than um, a technical card reading. Excuse me, so much talking back to back. So I do spirit card reading. And let's see. And with spirit card reading, I draw three cards. The first card shows the situation. The second card shows the path that you should take. And then the third card is where you get to if you, you know, where your goal. So if you're like, oh, I am so, uh, you know, I'm writing a book and I have writer's block. then. Um, 
what can I do? The first card will really show the situation. The second card tells you what to do. And the third card shows you your beautiful outcome, which for a writer hopefully is a published book, but you never know. It might say you should be doing something else altogether. So you see this deck, um, which is by uh, Ava Sackmer. This is also like you get at like Pathways and uh, other festivals. Oh my God, her work is so beautiful. So beautiful, totally recommend. And she has the cards and the, the book. So, I like to start with this one sometimes because um, I don't know, it's all about love, and I feel so. Um, yeah, they're telling me we're not going to start with this one. We'll go to this one later. We are going to start with the Wisdom of Hidden Realms by Colette uh, Baron Reed. So, and that happens sometimes you're on a track and your guides are like, no, 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 you need to go on. So again, we have the book and the cards. So, let's see. Who would like me to read for you? Do you ask? Yes, I'm going to read for someone. Leah, would you like me to read for you? Give me an okay if that's a yes. If it's no, don't worry. That's okay. Leah, the artist, would you like me to give you a quick reading? Is there anyone who wants a, a quick, oh, Crystal, okay, and Leah, okay, so we got Crystal, and we got Margie, so when I do a three-card reading, I always knock the cards to my heart, that's just, you know, like you're knocking at a door, um, so we're going to start with Crystal. Crystal, just open your mind up. Open your mind up and uh, we'll see what comes forward. What's your situation? This card. My card's very eager to jump out. Okay. Nope, this one. Okay. So Crystal. The situation we have is Dreamwalker, Dreams, the Collective Good, Illusions. There you go. I am so sorry that my like video camera is not that good because the artistry on this is beautiful. But your situation is Dreamwalker, Dreams, the Collective Good, Illusions. And the path is the Queen of Light. Illumination, enlightenment, celebration. I think we have a theme here. Okay, <laughs> great. Um, and then the outcome is the word lord, communication, praise, and dishonesty. Now, here's the interesting thing. It was upside down. So I told you sometimes when cards are right side up or upside down, they have different meanings. My guides know I do not work with upside down cards because I'm like super dyslexic. And usually the upside down card, it, it's I, I'm like, just tell me what you want to tell me. Don't make me work for it. Oh my God, right side up, upside down. I get it like forward, backward. I get it so confused. All of my cards in all the decks, they're always the same way. They're always right side up. In fact, after I'm done working with my deck, I go through and I make sure they're all right side up before I put them in the box. 
this card came out upside down for your final outcome, which means that this is the resonance, but it's like the opposite way of how it's intended. And that's very interesting that an upside down card was in my deck. The word Lord, communication, praise, dishonesty. So here's the thing. Your situation is the dream walker. Dreams, the collective good, illusion. So, uh, Crystal, um, obviously, I mean, I don't need to intuit it. You are wondering about, you know, what you can do, what, what you can do for helping the planet, what you can do for helping those you love what can is it time for your light to shine and the path is telling you the queen of light illumination enlightenment celebration absolutely it is time for your path it is time for you to go forward on your path it is time for you to light up go from being the dream walker to the queen of light it is one step forward and a total transformation and what will the outcome of that be? You will counter effect, shine light upon, and transform all the negative, the dishonesty. So this is really powerful. And I see we have a few people who want readings, so we don't. But here's a little something. When you're doing a three card reading, afterwards, you can take the top card and it says, and this is like an extra information. You only pull it after you've pulled the cards and read them. It's extra information. And the top card goes for the one, the first card, the situation. It says, the lady in the mirror, reflection, non judgment. So this is advice for you. How do you go from being the dream walker to the queen of light. Reflect upon yourself without judgment. So it gets back into your strength is when you are one with your truth. If you are with your truth and you have faith in it, you go forward shining the light of your truth, you will dispel all of this darkness. And then we go to the very bottom card. Woo! And it is the ringmaster of scrutiny, discernment, clear vision, details. So the word Lord becomes the ringmaster of scrutiny. And look how much they're the same. I'm going to put them both. They're both like old bearded guys with books. But one of them has deceit, and the other one is shining light. That is amazing. That is so cool. So what they're telling you is, go forward with trust and faith. This is your time. Okay? Um, all right. So, hold on. Um, so... Crystal, you got your work cut out for you, girl. You got to go forward with love and light, okay? And so then we have next uh, Margie. We have Margie and then Leah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Margie. Nope. I'm being called to the Denise Lynn Sacred Traveler deck for you. I don't know why. That's the one that I, and again, it has the book, which we're going to ignore unless we absolutely need to uh, go back and. Let me get these so we don't end up with 20 piles of cards all over here in disarray. So when I store my cards, I put in whatever, like, you know, uh, their manufacturer stuff, things like that. In this one, I have some messages for me. And then I put the book 
and then I put the cards. So that way, whenever I open it, the cards just like fall into my hand, and I never have to worry about them being messed up with the other stuff. That's the way I do it. Some people like to put the book on top. I put the cards on top. Okay, so we are with Margie. Okay, Margie, we have here the Sacred Traveler Oracle Cards by Denise Lim. Beautiful deck. And I'm sure if you don't know who Denise Lim is, look her up. She is a gem for our planet. People ask, how long do I hold the cards to my heart? Keep in mind, I'm grounded and I'm open and flowing. And I'm asking, what message is there for Margie? And I've just knocked the cards to my heart. And I feel the energy coming in. I feel the energy coming in and filling my heart. And now it's complete. So as long as the energy is flowing, I don't worry about it. I, I just stay there. Sometimes it's quick. Sometimes it's actually a few minutes. Okay. There we go. And if you ask, how do I know the cards? Like, if the cards, like, sometimes they jump into your hand and you hear someone like, pick me, pick me. Or you can just, like, some people will just spread them all out and they pick whichever ones. I close my eyes so that I'm just, like, whichever one ends up in my hand is the one. And Margie, we have Traveling Lightly. Simplify your life. <laughs> Simplify your life. And look at this. Here is a person on the road heading towards a beautiful vista. And of course, traveling lightly is your situation. And oh, look at this. There were two cards for your past. <laughs> I didn't even know there were two cards, but they are the two perfect cards. The first card is overcoming obstacles. You can overcome anything. So the situation, traveling lightly, simplify your life. How do you make this happen? Overcoming obstacles. And then the second card. Grace and gratitude. Through gratitude, joy expands. This is your path, girlfriend. Allow yourself to just go over the obstacles with grace and gratitude and joy. That is an amazing teaming. And where does this take you? Finding sanctuary, opening to your spiritual source. That's powerful. That is powerful. I hope, Margie, you feel how relevant this is. That is really something. Just think. If you are saying... How can I get from this to that? They're telling you, get rid of everything that doesn't serve you. Just go over or around your obstacles with grace and gratitude. Keep in mind, when there's an obstacle in your path, if it stops you, it has already been an obstacle before you reach it. If you're walking down your path and you see an obstacle and you stop, you haven't even come to the obstacle and you're stopped, right? But if you fill yourself with grace, gratitude, and joy, and just keep going, it is amazing how these obstacles crumble. And then the next thing you know, and they're so much easier if you've already lightened your load, right? And then the next thing you know, you are at your personal sanctuary. Now, of course, when we say sanctuary, it could be physical, it could be emotional, it could be just the weight off your shoulders. It could be you are now open and connected and flowing with understanding. 
It could be you're sleeping well at night. It could be whatever is your personal sanctuary. But dang, that looks beautiful. Opening to your spiritual source. It is not telling you what your sanctuary is or what your source is. It is telling you that when you open, it will be there for you. This is very, very powerful. And the top card for the uh, first one, tra traveling lightly. Why is it relevant that you do this? Because you are stepping into your power, girl. You are strong beyond measure. That's nice. And the bottom card that's connected with finding your sanctuary. In the flow, everything is smooth sailing. That is so beautiful. When you look at the obstacles versus being in the flow, if all it takes is going forward, Eh, where is it? Going forward with grace and gratitude. Look at that. Look at that. Grace and gratitude is the difference between an obstacle and being in the flow. That is something for you to think about. I hope that's helpful. I hope that's helpful message. So you guys, after I do a reading, I put the card to my heart and I knock again. Because the first time I knocked, I'm bringing all your energy in. The second time, I'm letting all your energy release. You know, there's some people that are like, don't touch my cards. I don't want your energy in my cards. No. Um, but then you go to a class, and we're like handing out our decks like candy on Halloween. Here, try this deck. Try that deck. Everyone's energy is getting into it. But we're okay with that because whenever I get a deck, the first thing I do is, well, first of all, I admire it, but I take each card, individual card and I knock it to my heart. Each card individually all the way through the deck. And I knock the whole deck to my card. This card is now imprinted with my energy. So if I give it to you and you hold it and you play with it, the first thing I do is tell you knock it to your heart so your energy is in there. And then when you give it back to me, I knock it to my heart, your energy is gone, and it's back to mine. So that's how I was taught by uh, Reverend Deborah Oleski when she taught me how to do angel card reading. Um, and what's the difference between angel card reading and spirit card reading? They're the same, it's just different decks. And um, how much you pay. <laughs> so... Uh, we're here to Leah, Miss Leah, we're going to do a reading for you, and we are, I am called to use Kyle Gray's Angel and Ancestors Oracle deck. I love Kyle Gray, I love him, and inside the deck, it says, Guardians of the Four Corners, Mother in the Earth, Father in the Sky, Angels, Ancestors, sacred ones i call on you and welcome you here now i love his deck so this one is um every culture in our planet has a connection with angels it's not just the christians every culture so this is honoring the cultures around the planet and their connections with angels and what is most divine it's also beautiful artwork. And of course, the first one I see, Peacekeeper. Let go of the need to be right, but look at that, it's White Buffalo Woman. Who, here's my White Buffalo Woman blanket. White Buffalo Woman is one of the non-physical people who raised me. And White Shell Woman, I've known them my whole life. They've kept me out of a lot of trouble. They've gotten me into a lot of trouble. Okay, so for Leah, 
see what the cards have for you. I like this deck because it's angelic and it's earth and it's cultural and there's animals and there's nature. Oh, okay. So this one jumped right out. There's a little confusion over that last one. All right, this one, no confusion. Okay, so the situation, it says, Father Sky, trust in the unknown. Look at that. And look at that, we got the eagle again. Leah, you and I are eagle sisters tonight. Father Sky, trust in the unknown. That's your situation. And then your path, it says, she wolf, unleash the wild within. Oh my God, Leah, look at that. How beautiful is this? So your situation, trusting the unknown, they're saying, let your inner wild take over. And where will this take you? The white witch, be the light. <gasps> that is something. So if you look at this, so what they're saying is you need to, you need to trust in the unknown, which, um, you know, of course, Leah, I know you, and that's something you've been working on. But trusting in the unknown is not just about trusting that out there to be empowered. They're saying, if you're going to trust the unknown, if you're going to boldly go where no one has gone before, then unleash your inner wild. You are the one who's empowered. You're the one going forward. It is you. It is all you. You are the wolf woman. You are the father sky. You are the mother moon. This is all you going forward. Claim your power, your wildness. Go forward with gusto. And as you see, the result ends up being this beautiful, pure, white light, magical, you know, state of being. So there's a lot of, you know, really trusting in yourself, committing to yourself, going for, it's not just about going all in, it's also going all forward, all forward. And let's see what your top card is. These are a little stick, not sticky, they're stiff. I haven't used this deck very much. Eagle. See from the higher perspective. So when they're saying, oh my God, two eagles right there. So your situation is a father sky, trust the unknown. What they're saying is, trust it, but look at it from the higher perspective. Okay. So an eagle, eagle, double eagle. And look at that. They are facing each other. Okay. So, Leah, think about this. When you're in the middle of a situation, no matter where you look, all you see is the situation. But when you rise up and look from an overview, you see the situation and how it connects to everything around. That's what they're telling you. If you want to have trust and faith and go forward with great boldness, you don't want that situation to go with you where you go forward. Take yourself up. Look at it for what it is and go forward from here with your personal power and passion. And I know you. You have extraordinary power in your passion. <gasps> and we're back to the first card, Peacekeeper. 
So it says, let go of the need to be right. And we're back to white buffalo woman, my patron. That is wild. So when they're talking about let go of the need to be right, obviously, and again, I know you, you are a humble person. It's not about right or wrong. It's about truth, what is. So what they're saying is, when you're in the resonance of truth, there is no right or wrong. There is just what is. Like Neil deGrasse Tyson said, science doesn't care what you think. Science is. You know, it's when you are in the resonance of truth, you don't need to convince anyone. You don't need to logic anything or justify it. It is. White Buffalo Woman says, when your prayers and your actions are in alignment, the path is easy. And that's very much what your cards are telling you today. Have your prayers and your path in alignment. And this alignment is faith from a higher perspective, faith of forward movement, Trusting in your extraordinary passion, your extraordinary ability. And where does this bring you to? A magical woman of light and grace and ease. In the resonance of truth. You guys see why I love cards so much? Leah, that is so beautiful. That is so beautiful. Yeah, we have time for a little more. So who else? Uh, <laughs> oh, you guys. Uh, Marina, Marina Cole. Okay. And yeah, Cecily, I'm glad. Yeah, the upside down cards. Uh, I mean, like, you guys, I am so dyslexic. Sometimes when I'm riding my bicycle, I start pedaling backwards by accident. I am, like, so freaking dyslexic. The idea of right side up, upside, it just gets everything so structured and in a box. And I'm like, but I'm free and open and flowing. I can't be structured in a box. So, But that's me. I know other card readers, they love the structure because that's what gives them the base to be able to open. So again, no judgment, no judgment on, on that. This is just me. So Marina. Marina, I don't know if you work with um, birds, but I'm being called to the winged enchantment uh, oracle deck for you. The energy is very light in this, but powerful, powerful. Um, it has a little book in it. Let's see. Beautiful book. Winged Enchantment. This one is made by Leslie Morrison and Lisa Hunt. This beautiful deck. And big. I like big cards makes you know they're long it makes it very easy to shuffle okay so this is for marina marina i i have a niece named marina i love your name so your name is of the water and I am being called to use cards of the air, which is also connected with water. So, okay, so this one jumped out. This one asked to jump in. Okay. Hi, Mitzi. Okay, and two cards for the final one. That happens sometimes. So I was feeling like when I pulled out, I was like, Wait, this one, this one, this one, this one. Like, they both had the same, so I knew it was two. So your situation, you have Blackbird. Blackbird is your situation. Isn't that beautiful? That is gorgeous artwork. So 
So blackbird, which is raven, crow, these birds work um, with vulture in that they clean the planet, they purify, they set space, they create sacred space, they are the messengers. The blackbirds are extremely wise, wise birds. But if the blackbird is showing up in your cards, it's saying you're being called upon in this situation to acknowledge your wisdom and to clean any toxic energy so that sacred space can come forward. It's about creating sacred space and releasing so that everyone else around can be very healthy and strong and connected. They will turn to you for wisdom and they will turn to you for support. That's what Blackbird brings. Isn't that beautiful? So this is the situation. And then the path that comes forward is Robin. Look at this. Illumination through the thicket. What I'm being told in your card, and we will glance at the book when we're done, but what I'm getting is And Marina, please, during the comments, let me know if I'm even remotely correct. Um, good. Let me know if I'm being correct. But what I'm getting is when you are there for everyone else, you also need them there for you. It is not enough for you to create clean up the mess, clean up the toxic energy, create sacred space, share words of wisdom, and then you are left like alone in a swamp, alone in the thistles, and you have to find your way out. This is what I'm hearing, that finding the balance and the rapport so that you may be flowing and helpful for others, but without depleting yourself that you may uh, give, but you also need to receive. If this is, um, can you let me know if this is a relevant issue because this is what I'm getting from these cards. And okay, thank God, thank God, okay. Oh, Cicely, I'm glad you're making your kombucha. I love making kombucha. So here's the thing, Marina. You can only ever help others with the energy that flows through you. You cannot help others with your energy. If you are giving your energy, then they eat up your energy. They're satisfied. Mm, thanks for all that good energy. They walk away. And you are left alone, exhausted, and starving. This is what they're showing. So what they're saying is the power of Raven is that Raven is wise and supportive. But you see in this card here, with the help of Robin, they're in the wilderness, they're in the thickets there, but they're cozy and well lit. Okay. Robin is actually really good at stealing from others. <laughs> Robin is really good at taking care of self. And they are bringing abundance around them wherever they are. So um, let's see. Let's see where this is going because this is... So we have Lark and Crane. This is interesting. So what I'm getting is... If you are able to flow energy, and we're going to talk about this in a moment, so that you're not using up your own energy. That's a big thing. Just the energy that flows through you for them. Um, crane, 
is wonderful at caring for self and lark is wonderful at sharing love so you will be in a strong place crane is also about healing and creating life and lark is about connecting with divine so here's what i want you to do um marina what they're telling me is when I use these really cryptic cards like this, it's great because I open up and the messages come straight through. What they're saying is um, you have a little bit of a compulsion to help others when they need help. So, and that's exhausting. I'm sorry, anyone who's an empath, we all get that. So don't feel singled out, Marina. The advice I'm giving you, I think pretty much everyone here on the live stream, it's gonna be relevant to us. Because we feel how they're feeling, we can relate to it, we wanna help them. But it's not always our place to help people. So here are a few things to ask yourself. First of all, when you are an empath and marina you are a powerful empath i hope you know that because you are a powerful empath when you are an empath you can feel what everyone else is feeling sometimes you can read people's thoughts or sometimes you feel the emotions or the energy that was in a room or a space before you got there It is very important that you tap in to clean energy at all time, okay? You don't tap into the energy around you. You tap into your guides, divine guides above, magical guides below. Tap into your animal spirit guides. Tap into your guardian angel. Tap into your mentors. Like for me, as I go through my everyday, vulture is always circling above me as has been my entire life from my first breath in this planet. Often there's a few animal spirit guides around me. White shell woman, white buffalo woman, they're with me so much, as is their apprentice, the angel Azangel. Azangel is an angel who's apprenticed with these two ancient shamanic uh, goddesses. Um, my guardian angel is with me. The Akashic librarians are with me every day, all the time. <laughs> like they raised me in this life. Uh, Gaia is with me a lot. So when I'm going forward, I'm not connecting to the energy of the people around me. I'm connecting to my guides and my divine. They flow their energy to me, emanate it out of me. And then when people come to me and they say, Oh, Benita, I need help. I um, let the energy flow through me to them. My energy for me, always intact, okay? So for every one of you empaths, find your version of that. Um, and in fact, in our Saturday morning classes, after we get through, uh, next we have the crown chakra this coming Saturday, and then the pineal gland, and then we're gonna start working our kundalini energy flow. Uh, and we're going to start working the chakras outside of the body. All of this work is going to come with that. Trust me. Um, what did Leah say? Oh, I'm so glad, Leah, that my Saturday class is helping you. The point of the Saturday class, and again, it's a free live stream, is for everyone to work your energy centers so that you're not, so that you are the one empower you're very empowered and strong so then when you go off and do things you can stay awake or when things happen you've got a strong energy grid to deal with it so this is an issue for you marina very much so you're not the only one you have so much to give but you must keep your energy for you and let the divine energy flow through you. You must, uh, like as we're doing here the Wednesday nights, tap in. Is it even your place to help this person? Often the people who are most demanding are the ones who are stuck in a karmic lesson that they don't want to get themselves out of. 
They want you to pick them up and carry them out. But you can't get out of a karmic lesson except by yourself. So if I'm in a karmic lesson, I'm like, oh, oh, this is awful. I hate this. Marina, Leah, I need both of you to pick me up and carry me out. You go and you do it because you're loving, empathic people. And as soon as you go to all the energy of dragging me out and getting everything right, and I'm going to be like sucking up all your energy all the time because I'm now like this big old energy vampire. Finally, you're like, oh my God, Benito, we can't take it anymore. We have to put you down. The first thing I'm going to do is get really mad at you. How dare you? I've always been there for you, blah, blah, blah. And then when I know you're totally disconnected, I'm going to slide right back into my karmic lesson and I'll look for another sucker to drag me out. Like we all have people we love, but every time you talk with them, they're griping about the same thing and they never do anything about it. And you learn after a while, I can't help this person. They have to help themselves. It's that way for so much. People ask me, like my guides asked me a while ago, Benita, do you want to be a teacher or a healer? And I'm like, oh no. I do not want to be a healer. I want to be a teacher because I want to empower people to heal themselves. Uh, now, I do have people who come to me for healing sessions, and you know, that's fine. That's fine. I don't, you know, some people need their weekly zap or their whatever. And, um, you know, just like, you know, some people like to eat out at restaurants, they don't want to cook for themselves. I totally get that. Um, and I love healing people. I love doing prana shakti, reiki, shamanic. I love the modalities I've learned. However, for my heart and soul, it's so meaningful when I empower everyone to be able to care for themselves. So I'd rather be a teacher. For you, Marina, think about what you would rather be. What works with resonance of your truth? And then own it. People come to me all the time saying, Benita, I need you to help me with this. I need you to help me with that. I'm like, mm. I don't feel like it's my place to help you with that, but good luck. I wish you well. Or they come to me, Benita, I need your help with this or that. I'm like, oh, I would love to help, but I don't have the time. My plate is so full. My activities and responsibilities are overflowing the platter. So uh, good luck to you. I encourage all of you to practice saying that. I would love to, but I can't. Good luck. And then they'll go, no, you're the only one who can help. I'm sorry, I can't. Um, if you feel it's your place to help, then help. But always say, how much? How would I be of help? How will this person benefit from me? Start chatting with your guides. And that's where card readings come in. So, Marina, let's take a look at your top card. Falcon. Oh, my God. So, Falcon is here to help Blackbird, okay, with your situation. So, your situation, Blackbird, you know, you're the one who does all the cleaning and the releasing of the debris and the creating sacred space for everyone. Falcon is a hunter. Falcon is discerning. Falcon can be up in the sky, look down, see a field mouse in the grass, swoop down, grab it, swoop up, and be gone in the blink of an eye. Falcon is all seeing. And Falcon has dis discernment. Falcon will help with your raven. And this is similar to what Leah had. Look at things from a higher perspective. Anytime you are helping someone, you are giving your time and your energy. Is the situation, does it merit your time and your energy? How will your time and your energy benefit from the situation? Will you learn from it? Will you grow from it? My time with you guys here tonight, I'm having the best time, and I hope you are too. So. Crane and Lark, remember we talked about, you know, Crane is like the creator of life. 
You remember the stork carries the baby and um, very strong water connection. Lark, very strong air connection. And the song of life sings like a lark, singing creation into being. In many ways, the lark is like the crown chakra and the crane, whoops, the crane is the root chakra because the crane sets all the sacred space and creates the physical life. The lark is the one that sings the song of creation, brings all the divine blessings, the beauty. So what they're saying is this will be so much better for you than this. And seagull can protect you. Seagull, man, seagull. they all go out in packs. They take what they want. You know, the, you, do you remember the, uh, the movie Finding Nemo? The seagulls are like, mine, mine, right? Seagull, if you're looking with a higher perspective and you are protecting self, making sure you get what you need, your nature of divine goodness the crane and the lark, that will always be there. But allow yourself to really look at from the higher perspective and say, and how am I protected? How am I cared for in all of this? Okay, and that's actually, we are out of time, but you see the power of the three card draw. So you guys, next week, what I want to do is um, when I do a three-card draw, I do a multi-deck three-card draw. And that's where you start with one deck, and then, like, I do another row. I'm like, okay, well, that's, like, great information, but I want more details. And I'll pull another deck, and I'll bring it through. And sometimes I'll even get five or eight decks worth of three to five cards going and at the end i have so much information um i've had people who come to me with the question they want a card reading because they have a question and as i'm reading the cards the information that comes through has nothing to do with their question um and you know and so we go more and more and more into detail until finally they get their epiphany of, oh, this thing I'm obsessed with is something that I want, but it has nothing to do with my purpose for life or what's relevant for me. Uh, like I once was reading for a woman, she was obsessed about, um, is the man she's with her soulmate. And generally, if you need to go to a stranger for a card reading to find out if the man you're with is your soulmate, the answer is probably going to be a no, um, as was in this case. But I'm reading the cards, and I kept saying to her, what they're showing me is you on a platform in front of a lot of people. You're mentoring a lot of people. I'm seeing an office like a suite with a lot of doors and all these people are doing your work and the world is benefiting. Like it was getting into crazy detail, even on the kind of work she was supposed to do. And the cards were giving all this information and she kept saying, but what about this man? But what about this man? I'm like, your guides, no one cares about this man. He is irrelevant to your life. Keep him or reject him. It doesn't matter. But it's saying, you have to do this work. And finally, she said to me, yes, 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 this is what I do. And then she told me, I'd never met this woman before. The work she did, that she did public presentations all over the world in huge conferences, like thousands of people watching her. She had a huge office with a suite of people who practiced this uh, area of healing that she had created. This woman was a very important, powerful woman. And she was so focused on this guy who was um, keep him, lose him. No one, no one from any soul connection in your life path cares one way or another. 
And finally, she realized her work was really important. And the moment we hit the card where she was like, oh, my God, my work is really important. I saw that truth flow into her. And at that point, everything in her life made sense. Every, you saw everything just like choo, 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 go into place. And she was fully empowered. So um, next week, we'll do um, a reading, a multi-card deck reading. And, um, and you guys will see how powerful that is. Um, and so if you have cards, if you're welcome to bring them next week, and you can also give yourself a multi-card reading, you know, and if, if you don't have cards, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, you can also download an app on your phone. Um, I have, uh, there's all kinds of great uh, card apps. Most of them you can get like X amount of cards for free or you pay a little money and you get a whole deck. Um, I use, what is the one that I have that I love so much? Um, hold on. It is the Soul Wisdom. And let's see if it will come up. It's the Indigo's Soul Wisdom. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, Obviously, this is uh, not working out well. But the Soul Wisdom Oracle Cards by Sandra, S-U-N-D-A-R-A, Fawn, F-A-W-N, Sandara Fawn, Soul Wisdom Oracle Cards. I love this. Um, I do my, if I need to do a quick reading and I don't have card decks with me, I always have my cell phone. <laughs> Okay, so you guys, um, uh, do you you can do daily readings with your decks. Uh, some people have like one deck they love to do their daily reading with. Um, the uh, Doreen Virtue cards are wonderful, like the Mermaid and Dolphin. Sometimes I'll do a quick three card reading of what's going to happen with my day. Her um. I know Doreen kind of went a little nuts there, um, and that's a whole other thing, but and you can see it in her cards. Her early decks are beautiful and full of such purity, and you can see as she started going a little more, um, you know, the way she went, the energy in her decks changed, but, you know, I love her older decks for sure so i'm just going to give myself a little like what's in it for me okay here we go and i love her mermaids and dolphins i love her fairy cards so this one pay attention notice <laughs> notice repetitious signs and your inner guidance uh, so anyway it's telling me to pay attention that's my situation and yeah, I get yelled at all the time by my guides. Benita, pay attention, get focused. I'm like, but I have ADHD. Uh, accept heaven's help. And self-forgiveness. Oh my God, you guys, I started with self-forgiveness and now I have self-forgiveness again. Remember Quan Yin came and talked about forgiving myself? So they're telling me, pay attention. And I am. I can walk past amazing things happening all around. And I'm so in my mind, I don't notice anything going around. And guides can be there, let us help you, let us help you. And I'm like in my, and they're saying, pay attention, accept help, and forgive yourself. Thank you, Doreen. Those are words that I absolutely need, and I'm not ashamed to admit it okay well thank you guys thank you. oh before we part ways remember um if you haven't yet bought tickets for our all-day symposium this sunday i put it like the second comment i think in the comments link is uh for the event uma of lotus and uma and lotus Uma and Rob of Lotus Wellness and I and Carlos the Medium 
are doing an all day symposium on raising your vibration. Um, we're offering techniques, history, awareness, insight. This is going to be really powerful, really powerful. Anyone who buys tickets for this, um, you will get the recording for this and our two previous symposiums uh, in one uh, program. So you'll, you'll get, it's $44 and it's like an all day symposium packed with information. Um, boy, really good intuitive information. And then you'll have all the recordings and everything with it. So I hope you can join us. If money's a problem, let me know. I know some of us are a uh, little tight on the purse strings, what with all of this craziness going on. So if that's an issue, just, you know, message me on Facebook. We'll work something out. Um, and I'll be back Saturday morning. We're going to work on our crown chakra. That's going to be so much fun. Because remember, the crown chakra and the root chakra are the same. They're two sides of the same thing. Uh, so we're going to do that here on Facebook Saturday at 11. Um, and then Sunday all day will be our symposium. Um, and then one last plug, and I promise to also put it here in the comments, starting next week, May 23rd on Saturday. Um, as you guys know, I um, channel, I'm at what's called an open channel, which means um, a lot of different beings and deities and people who have passed have channeled through, spoke, taken my body and used my body to share their messages. Um, but my best friends are the Akashic Record librarians and the Akashic Collective. Um, so they want to share messages about what's happening on our planet now and what's happening on our planet going forward. Um, so they want to teach everyone how to be empowered, to be ready for everything coming on. They want to explain to you from 3D all the way up to the higher perspective what is happening now and what will happen uh, going forward to New Earth. Uh, a few years ago, I channeled them and everything they predicted, including earthquakes and natural disasters and revolutions breaking out, everything happened exactly when they said it would. Um, but they feel so importantly, they want everyone to feel empowered to be able to claim the future of our planet for yourselves. So um, I will be doing weekly channelings. They're going to take over my body and talk directly to you. Um, and they can answer questions too. So um, this will be on Zoom. This will not be a, f a open Facebook live stream. It will be on Zoom so you can actually talk directly with them. So thank you guys. Thank you so much. Um, I hope you had fun tonight. I did. And I give you my love. Bye.